Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert, and it's kind of gear review time with a difference. This one is one of those studio essentials that if you use patch bays, you've got to try this out. And trust me, it is worth it. I will leave that for the punchline later. Um, this is a piece of software called Patch CAD, and I'll just launch it. So what, pray tell, I hear you screaming, is Patch CAD? Well, Patch, as in Patch Bay, CAD, as in Computer Aid Design. One of the biggest complaints I hear from anyone building their own studio is if they buy a Patch Bay, labelling is an absolute nightmare, or it just looks rubbish. Step into the void, Patch CAD. Now, I'm fairly sure this is the only piece of software doing this, um, so I'll give you a quick tour and a quick show round, and I'll show you exactly what I've done with my studio. So on the right-hand side of the screen, we have this list of different patch bay styles, different patch bay manufacturers, and different patch bay uses. Now, as we click on each type, you'll see the graphic down here changes to reflect what we're actually looking at. And you can see they're all kind of listed by type, by model and by make. Others being things like power, jack patch bays, bantam patch bays, random stuff, video connections, BNCs in this case, different types of video connector, different bantam styles. There are plenty there to choose from. This is by no means every single patch bay that has ever existed or been created since the beginning of time. However, it is a very full list and new patch bay models and versions are being added to the list all the time. First time I switched it on today to do this demo for you, it said, do you want to download the update with new patch bay configurations? That's gotta be a good thing. So we're gonna scroll down here to Canford, down to termination panel, and we're gonna pick this one. That's the one I'm gonna work with because that's the one that's currently sat underneath my console acting as my patch connection between my drum room and the console itself. So first of all, we go up to the top right and we hit new project. I'm gonna call this um, XLR patch under desk. We can put in some location here. Client name, me, and all that sort of info. Very handy then all we have to do is click on the actual patch bay we want to use, either the image or the text. Now, because some patch bays have more space, this particular one has actually a peel off strip, a little plastic strip that I can then put the printout onto. Very, very cool. Um, I can choose the number of lines I want for each strip, if you like. I'm gonna choose two and click OK. So down here we now have a kind of representation of our patch bay and how it's gonna look in real size, full size if you like. And up here we have the kind of matrix editor. So it's very, very simple. I've got two rows for each part. So I'm gonna click on there and I'm gonna go kick in, tab, kick out, snare top, snare bottom. And there we go. Very, very quick to start labeling stuff. Now that's quite neat and quite efficient but we also have a second row there. Now in this case, these are the lines that are coming from my drum room. So the second line I'm gonna put DR1, DR2, DR3, DR4. Okay, so I can now see exactly where things are coming from and where they're going to. Now we can obviously get a bit more creative than that. We can change the font color, let's make it blue and we can change the background color. Let's make that pink. Maybe not. Let's change that for something a bit more. There we go. And let's change the background color back to something more usable. Cool. And then we can change the color underneath. Let's change that to blue. And you can see my patch bay is forming. Really, really cool, really neat. Now, if I want to, I can, of course, put blocks around those. If I want to, around individual parts. If I want to, or I can get rid of them. Very, very cool, very simple. Now, one of the things I'm also thinking about is the actual size of the text. I can select it all, and I can just keep 
increasing it until it gets to the point where I think, eh, maybe not. I hit bold. There we go. Now I can see better. Let's do the same on the bottom one. Increase the size. Hit bold. Maybe italicize it. Maybe underline it. Who knows? I can strike through. This is basically now word processing stuff. Now, of course, in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier, and this is the actual one that sits underneath my console. You can see all my kick lines, my drum room, and the lines to my Audient console. All I have to do now is print it out. So what the print function is going to do is first of all, show me the preview, and it's gonna print it out onto conventional A4 or letter size paper, depending on where you are in the world. But what it'll also do is allow you a certain amount of overlap. Now that's normally in the realm of about four or five centimeters, depending on how big your patch bays are. But actually it works out really, really well. And if you look at the images from underneath my console, sorry, it's all a bit dark down there, you can see exactly how this lays out and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now, I said I'd leave the best to last. Patch CAD is only available online, and sadly, Mac users, it's only a PC application right now. I'm sure the Mac version won't be far behind. However, Patch CAD is £9.99. That's £9.99. You can't buy a label writer and print out the labels for that. Trust me, you certainly can't measure up all the distances and get everything right into a nice kind of Excel style spreadsheet and line it all up and print it. Anything like as easily as you can using PatchCAD. All the hard work has been done for you. When I tell you this is a one-man band operation, you probably won't be surprised. This is a labor of love, and trust me, this is definitely something, if you use patch bays and if you've got one or two or several, you are gonna want to spend a tenner on this product. So for now, my name's James Ivey, and I will see you again soon for some more Gear Talk.